Hi, I'm Amy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the bow hold. You can use this bow hold for viola or violin, not for cello or bass. <laughs> it is important to note the difference between calling it a bow hold and a bow grip. Grip has a more tense connotation. So when we say we're holding on to something, it's almost as gentle as if you're holding on to an egg. First, I want to start with taking you through the whole process of finding your bow hold, your unique hold, because everybody's bow hold is a little bit different because everybody is built differently. After we go through the process, I'll explain why I really prefer this method of finding your bow hold. This is the method I use personally and I also use for all of my students. All right, let's jump right into it. So first of all, you don't even need your bow to get started. I learned this method a few years ago, and in particular, the way to get into the bow hold or get the whole process started from a place of ease, from a place of natural positioning of the body. And ever since then, I've used it with absolutely everybody, including myself. You're gonna start sort of like we start with holding the instrument. You'll have your feet, you can take two steps forward, two steps back, and your feet will line up with your hip joints. And then just practice swinging your arms. Your arms should feel like they're hanging limp from your body. No effort at all. You're just swinging them back and forth. We're going to swing the right arm, swing the right arm forward, and then hold it in front of you. Okay, so from the side it looks like this. Here we go, swinging forward, and just in front of you like that. See how my hand, it's really loose. If I go a little bit closer, let's see. So you can swing your arm back and forth and hold it straight out in front of you with your arm, your hand nice and limp, okay? Once we've got our hand there, your fingers are dangling nice and limp. What you wanna do is lift up your hand. Lift up my sleeve here. So swing, hang, and lift your hand. And as you lift, you want to imagine, feel that you're lifting your hand from the top of your hand, from the back of your hand. Another way you can imagine it is if your hand is hanging and you somebody pushes it up for you, or there's almost a, a little bubble rising from the inside of the palm of your hand. And as you do that, you'll notice, this is what you should notice, is that your fingers are hanging naturally from your hand. Okay, and then we can do the finger test. Can you lift your pinky and let it fall back down? Can you lift your ring finger? Can you go fingers and lift them and let them fall? That's how they should fall. Now, if you look at it from the inside, you can see there's a nice rounded shape. This is all flat, one surface. Your fingers are curved nicely forward. This is your basic bow hold. This is the basic shape. Your bow hold is actually going to require your thumb to be farther in. So you can m take your other hand and m take your thumb and put it behind the first knuckle of your middle finger. And that's basically your bow hold. You can practice turning your hand like this, going up and down, like you're knocking on a door or turning a doorknob. For this first exercise that we're going to do before we start to hold the bow with our new bow hold, I need you to grab a pen or a pencil that has one of these clips on it. One of these, the clip is going to act like part of the frog where your thumb will be placed when you put it on the stick of the bow. So we get our bow hold set up, arm in front of you, lift up the hand, nice curved fingers, thumb behind the index finger. Now, while just keeping your hand in this shape, you're holding your pen or your pencil. I'm holding a pen, so I'm just gonna call it a pen. Uh, you're holding your pen in the left hand, and what I want you to do is hold it in front of you with this part, with the clip side down. Hold your pen with the clip side down on the opposite side. So it'll be, the clip side will be on the right side. Hold your hand out in front of you, lift, so swing, lift, thumb behind the middle finger, take your pen and you're going to scoop it up, so I'll show you here first, scoop it up behind those first knuckles and then your thumb and your middle finger will be 
opposite one another. I keep wanting to move. Opposite one another. And essentially, this, this is a good starting, starting point. What you can see here is a finished product with the surface of my hand going straight across. So it's not up and it's not down. It's actually kind of, you can imagine this bone is going straight through the middle. So if this bone were sticking out through the palm of my hand, it should be sticking out and sticking myself in, sticking my middle finger actually at that first joint. It would go straight through here, okay? Nice and relaxed, easy fingers. And then you're gonna take your pen with the clip side down on the right side because we're working with the right hand for the bow. And have your hand, your fingers, fingers draping, thumb behind the middle finger. And you're going to, you can do this a couple of ways. So one way, you can take the pen and just fish it in there in between your thumb and your fingers. But you'll notice I ended up with the clip kind of over here. So I actually want my thumb, my thumb to be touching the clip right here on the side. So this is the other way you can do it. So you can have the side of your thumb, not the tip of your thumb, the side of your thumb hitting the clip right here. So let's see if I can show you. So you see the clip and then the end of my thumb is right there. So if I'm look, giving myself a thumbs up, I can go backwards and take the clip and go right like that. And then if I keep it like that, the, my middle finger connects around, my ring finger joins, my first finger joins, and then the pinky is gonna be on the tip, on its tip, right there on top. So that is your basic bow hold. Let's now do this with the bow. You're going to hold the bow in your left hand like this. I'm actually going to tighten the hair a little bit. Hold the bow in the left hand really light. Um, you don't want to be too far over to one end or the other. Um, just hold it here so that it's comfortable for you. You can swing your arm and get everything ready in place. And then just like we did with the, this part is like the clip. So if I hold it with my left hand, I'm going to take my thumb and I can put it right here. You'll see on my bow, there's that part that's worn away because that's where I put my thumb and I need a new leather grip. <laughs> so the thumb here will go right inside and the side here is where you're going to actually make contact with the bow, with the wood of the bow. So put that in there, and do you notice that my thumb pad is facing toward the screw? It's facing away. It's not facing up. I'm not going up. So I'm on the side corner of my thumb, and it's going this way. You should be able to kind of grace the side of your frog with the pad of your thumb. Put that up here, and now I'm just going to drape my fingers around so if you're looking at it from here, thumb here, and just drape, drape your fingers around the front. So thumb here, drape your fingers around the front. And then the, what's, the last thing we have to do is put the pinky on its tip right here. So thumb, drape, pinky. This should be your point of view. Thumb, drape, pinky. Thumb, drape, pinky. All right, so at all times, you should have a nice circle through which you can see. You know, your, things are going to be able to move, but this is our basic starting point. I have two exercises for you. I'm happy to do a video where we do many more bow exercises, and I fully intend to. But just for getting started, I want to give you two air bow exercises you can do to practice your bow hold and really master this feeling. I think holding the bow and using the bow efficiently and effectively is the most challenging part about playing the violin or the viola. The first exercise is going to be bowing 
up and down with your arms straight in front of you with the tip pointing to the sky. Okay, so we have the tip and we have the frog. So if you're playing at the frog, you're playing close down here. If you're playing at the tip, you're playing close up here. You have your bow hold. Get them in there. Fingers around front, pinky on top. Hold it in front of you. And I want you to rotate your bow like you're turning a doorknob. And I want you to pretend like there is a candle. This is another tip that I learned from a teacher a long time ago. Pretend like there is a candle at the tip of your bow and if you move it around, the wax is going to drop and burn your hand. So bow slowly down to the ground and keep your bow straight. If you want, you can hold it a little bit closer to your body and then bow straight up so that it stays straight into the sky. You can go all the way up and all the way down. And I would recommend counting to four on the way up and counting to four on the way down. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. From the side, go up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. So it's a very smooth and slow motion. We're not trying to go fast here. All right, and now it's important, shake out your hands, forget how it felt, forget everything you just did. And now I want you to recreate your bow hold. Stick it in there. And we're gonna learn one more exercise. So have you ever seen the show, I Dream of Jeannie? <laughs> and she goes like this. <laughs> so what we're going to do is take your, your left arm and take your fingers and place them inside of your elbow where it bends. And while you're holding your bow, pinky on its tip, this is very important for this exercise, keep your bow parallel to your forearm, your left forearm that's in front of you, and you're going to close your right arm at the elbow while you keep the bow parallel to your left forearm. So you can see that I've now bent my right wrist. You can see it's pretty bent to the side. So open and close. And here you can do the same thing where you count to four in each direction. So we can go close, two, three, four. Open, two, three, four. And then from the side, we're holding like this and you can see that my arms are relatively straight in front of me. They're about at the same level as my shoulder. You're gonna go closed, two, three, four. I'm pointing right at you. Open, two, three, four. I feel it is important to let you know that this is not my primary equipment that I'm using on this beach right now. I am using my backup bow. I do not recommend taking your standard equipment outside in the sun at the beach. Finally, I just wanna go over a few reasons why I really prefer this method and why I use it all the time for myself and for all of my students. The first reason I use this method is because it starts from a place of ease. You've probably already noticed how much we talk about excess tension and this method really starts you from a place of ease so that you're not moving one thing at a time and as you're moving one thing at a time, something else could be getting tight, is most likely getting tight, as you're only thinking about one tiny part. I don't know the science there, but I know that when I think about one minute thing, my brain gets hyper-involved, the logical side of my brain, and I start to lose a sense of all the other parts of my body. The next reason I like this process of finding your bow hold is that it works with the natural form of your body. As I mentioned, everybody's bow hold looks completely different. And in this way, we're just going through a process that's using the natural curves of your bone structure and gravity, essentially, to help you find your unique bow hold. I encourage you to do a lot of research in this department and to try out different bow holds for yourself. I really like this bow hold because of the natural ease that it provides and the ease as a teacher that it gives me in helping my students find a bow hold that works really well for them because I don't have to worry about telling them to place their fingers on a certain part of the bow because somebody else's hand might be a lot smaller than mine or their fingers might be a lot thicker than mine and, 
and maybe their fingers are more comfortable, more spread out. Maybe they're more comfortable closer together. I know my bow hold has changed over the last 25 years and I'm sure that it will continue to change as my body continues to change. So this isn't something where you set it and forget it. You don't find a particular bow hold in and of itself and that's just the way that you hold your bow. What I believe in is finding a method and really understanding that method and how it works. So this process of swinging and letting our hand hang and bringing up the hand. This process of finding your bow hold will always help you find your unique hold as you grow and as you change. There's a lot of information out there. People hold their bows in different ways and I do encourage you to find one bow hold. Try it for one to two weeks depending on how much you're playing. If you're not playing very much then I would try it for at least two weeks. If you practice every day at least six days a week then I would recommend trying one particular bow hold for a week and see how well it works with your body. If you like it, try it for another week. If you don't like it, I think after about a week, maybe even 10 days, is a good time to explore a different bow hold. Try out this method and let me know how it goes for you. I encourage you to try it at least for one week. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. I'm anxious to know how it goes for you, so definitely let me know how it goes in the comments section below. I will definitely post more videos with bow exercises, bow hold exercises, anything to get you more proficient in using the bow on the violin and the viola. Thank you again for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.